Hello. The goal scorer's art, so it's said, is a gift. A special knack of being in the right place at the right time. Certainly one of the many, many qualities possessed by the two players sitting alongside me. George Best and Rodney Marsh, in football terms, the perfect match. But for the next few minutes, we're going to concentrate on the top two goal scorers of the 1970s. Bob Latchford consistently figured among the leading scorers both for Birmingham City and Everton, including the 77-78 season when he was top scorer with 32, an amazing 30 of those being league goals. And if anything, Malcolm McDonald was an even more prodigious goal getter. At table. He was top scorer in the first division on three occasions during the 70s, doing it for both Newcastle United and Arsenal. Gentlemen, Latchford and McDonald, out and out goal scorers. Would you call yourself goal scorers? Or you're, you're ball players, aren't you, really? Um, I don't know. I think over, over my career, I think I scored one and three. You know, a goal every three games. Which, so I don't know whether that makes me a goal scorer or not. I, I got my fair quota. Uh, I think if you categorise in players and, 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 and uh, as goal scorers, as ball players, um, I think that's one, one thing, but um, I looked upon myself as an entertainer. Uh, I used to love scoring goals, but I used to love um, beating players and nutmegging players and, and winning as well. Yeah. Uh, and it was like a complete package, it wasn't just scoring goals. But there are those players that have their bread and butter is scoring goals. They might not be great players or have great skills, but they score the goals. And, um, you know, we're going to look at a couple of those. Well, there's a difference between uh, a great goal scorer and a scorer of great goals. That's the difference. You know? yeah, that's good, a very, very good, good point. point. That's, that's a great point. Yeah, we're, that's we're with you there, George. I mean, I, I watch, uh, and we're going to see some of them. You watch some players who will always knock in 20, 30 goals a season. Uh, but there, there are different types of goal scorers. I'd like to see. Greavesy was, to me, I mean, the genius. See, see someone pick a ball up, like Marshy does, you know, beat three, four players. And then, and, and you get more satisfaction out of doing something. Uh, we, no, were talking, we were talking before about, you know, it doesn't matter whether you knock them in for me. It did to me. I didn't want to pick up you know, rebounds. I wanted to <laughs> stick it through yeah. a couple of legs and, That's right, and, yeah, and yeah. Yeah. curl it in from 300 yeah. yards. Or, yeah. and, and, and try things that other players wouldn't try. That's what I, when I, when I played, I always looked upon myself, bef even before the game, I was w hoping that something would arise during the game where I could try something <laughs> yeah. that other people were afraid to try. Yeah. Would you actually make it more difficult for yourself? If it was going to be that much more flamboyant. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I, I was going to say, I remember a game I played in for City once against Birmingham when I had a particularly good game. I was, I was having it on and off, as you say, you know. And uh, I, was, I ended up being one on one with Roger Hind, who was the last defender. And I turned him inside out about three or four times. Eventually, he fell over. And I got into the box, and I was only about eight yards out. And for some reason, I had a, I had a, a seizure <laughs> and tried to chip the goalkeeper from, from, from eight yards and hit the crossbar. You yeah. know, and uh, yeah, you could have side footed it. Oh, I could have done anything, you know. But did you shut crossbar before you hit it? <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing was, I went back to the halfway line, like walking back to the and the crowd applauded <laughs> for about two minutes. I don't know why. <laughs> Who wants goals? <laughs> Let's then have a look. What we're going to look at, we're going to look at a game of Everton against Coventry in November 77. I mean, obviously, we're looking at number nine of Everton, Bob Latchford. Uh, I mean, what, what, what Latchford? Well, there again, that's what I was saying. I mean, Latchford would always get you goals. You know, he'd always, he would always knock in 20 a season. Uh, you know, he scored a lot of goals, but, you know, as I said, to me, I like to see something a little bit different. In that era, you had people like Latchford, but you, you also have Arsenal as Radford, uh, uh, Clark of Leeds. Every team had, had one goal scorer at least. Yeah. All right, let, let's, let's go to Goodison Park then, 1977. See what how Latchford does as a goal scorer at playing against Coventry City. So it's to be David Jones to take the free kick. The only outfield player on the Everton side who hasn't scored this season. Lyons was there, Coop didn't get it away, and somehow it's been scrambled clear for Thomas to put over the top. Thomas, again to try the touchline. This is the kind of play he loves, and Europe has hooked him down. Eight minutes into the game, and Terry Yorath severely admonished for that tackle. Thomas takes the free kick himself. Good one. Dobson's header. Buckley. 
intercepted fairly easily by Powell. And going on for the shot is good. Ardiello with the corner. Good jump by McDonald. Well saved by Wood. Powell. Graydon. And Graydon's shot tipped over by Wood. Thomas coming to take it. And it's gone in. No, it hasn't. They're claiming it was over the line. But the referee points to the corner of the six-yard area for a goal kick. Gordon Lee with arms full of smolded. Cleared by Roberts. Lions, Latchford free, and it's a goal. Fedjik. Latchford there. Is that a penalty? I think the referee was unsighted. He was far side of the goal mouth from that trip. And that's a free kick. Donald bringing down Thomas. But I think that Coventry may have had a let off with the previous incident. Thomas takes the free kick and there's a goal! Latchford again! Yorans header, Hutchison. Buckley. Well taken on his chest by Latchford. Thomas. And Thomas runs Oki again. Back inside for a good cross. Pearson went for the flick. Dobson is up. King sneaking round the back. But it's a goal kick. Jones with the free kick. Flick on by Lyons. Latchford has kept it in play. He has Thomas there, number 11. And Thomas has got it over. They're queuing up at the back post there. And it's gone in off the post. Who's going to claim that? I think Pearson. It's the second time this season that Everton have scored four goals at Goodison Park. In fact, it's the second time in their last three games here. McDonald's head, it's come to King! You won't find a happier bench than that anywhere in the country. Nardiello. Good play by Nardiello! That's that left foot. Thomas. Thomas always a danger man. There goes another cross. Latchford pulled back for Dobson. Wasn't accurate enough or it should surely have been at least a shot at goal, if not a goal itself. Hutchison. Good work by Jones. Rebound that gave it back up to Hutchison. And the shot's good and it's gone through the goalkeeper's hands and wide of the post and not even out for a corner. Hutchison disappointed as he's entitled to be. And here's Latchford, chance for his third. No, beaten down by Blythe at absolutely point-blank range. Pedic, Dobson, Thomas, acres of space for him, two men to cross to, Latchford! What a glorious goal! And there's the final whistle to crown a magnificent performance.
performance by Everton. Three goals for Bob Latchford. Triumph for Gordon Lee. 6 0, and Bob Latchford in the right place at the right time. Do you know that uh, in watching that, that's the, the, one of the saddest things I think about of English football today is uh, the, um, before the break, before we looked at the videotape, we were talking about players. Every team in the 70s had a player or two that were great goal scorers. And today, they're still great goal scorers playing, but they, they're no longer in England. They, they go and lead the country, like um, Ian Rush is a brilliant, brilliant player, great goal scorer. Uh, Lineker, same thing. And we, for some reason, in today's English football, we don't hold on to them anymore, George. They seem to go to, you know... The... Well, because the money isn't here, we don't play European football anymore at the moment. Is that why they have to go? But, I mean, you, you said that you like scorers of are great goals, not great goal scorers. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're looking here at the 70s. We're going to look at McDonald's in a minute. We've looked at Latchford there. Well, we... is, is, is that what Lineker is? Is that, is that the kind of thing? Yeah, well, Lineker, it doesn't, it, doesn't it doesn't excite me that often when, it, when he scores. I mean, we were sitting here and we watched six goals and there wasn't really one where we went, oof, you know. Latchford's third, he, he hit well. And the lad Keane scored a good goal. But uh, you weren't on the edge of your seat, whereas, you know, and the days we played, every, every time you watched a game, you know, it, it just seemed to be when they were talking about goal scorers from that era, it was, oh, I mean, it was, it was pure excitement. But Another thing as well is, is, is that uh, if, you, if you watch Lat Latchford play, and we just watched him play there, the majority of Latchford's goals were scored from headers. So they're never going to be brilliant individual goals, they're just going to be a one-touch finish. And if you look at the, the tape, the three goals that he scored were just one-touch finish. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a question of beating a couple of players and bending it in the far corner like Dal Gleish uh, has done. But yeah. you're telling me you don't find that exciting and yet you're also telling me, Rodney, that that's what they want on the continent. They're buying our players who can do that. Yeah, I'm not saying it's good, better and different. What I'm saying is, is that uh, those players that score goals and we're looking at goal scorers are no longer in this country. There's very few uh, goal scorers that we tend to be able to keep here. Mark Hughes is another example of players that have gone abroad, you know, and, and I find that very sad with, it, with today's game. Yeah, I think that see, you're talking about two players who played hopefully different than, than a lot of people. Uh, I know we both thought about the way we played as theatre and excitement and entertainment. Uh, and people will always buy goal scorers. I mean, if you're, if you're guaranteeing, they, clubs don't care if a guy's going to knock in 20, 25, 30 goals, 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 goals for you. They, the clubs don't care how he scores them. We're, I'm, from a personal point of view, I'm just saying that I like to see great, exciting goals. And, and I, I know I'm talking in a way as if I'm spoiled because that obviously isn't going to happen. But I just don't think that there are enough great, great players around to give me that excitement. The question about Rush. Rush says he doesn't get the service he wants now out there in Italy. I mean, Thomas there, perhaps not a great winger, but a, it's a good player. His service to Latchford, absolutely vital to what Latchford was doing. Oh, magnificent. Thomas, always a danger man. There goes another cross. Latchford, Thomas, acres of space for him, two men to cross to, Latchford, what a glorious goal. You know, to take George's point, I think what he's saying is, is, is maybe when we played in the, yeah. in the 70s, a lot of the goals were great goals. There was lots of individual goals and brilliant. I mean, Bobby Charlton scoring from 30 yards out, he scored plenty of goals from like 30 yards where he beat a couple. And, you know, I don't think you see as many of that quality type goal that we tend to like mm -hmm. uh, in today's game. In actual fact, the majority of goals that are scored today are scored from just a one strike. The ball comes across, it's a header, a shot, uh, but there's very, very, very few individual goals. Well, <coughs> let's see how another great striker scored his goals. We're going to look at a Sheffield United versus Arsenal game now, and we're going to look at Malcolm McDonald. Uh, similar to Latchford in your minds? Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe I suppose a little bit more exciting at, at times, because he would pick a ball up and go at you a little bit more. And he had that blistering speed. He was very you quick. Know, he, was, he was very, very fast. Tremendous speed. Uh, so, in a way, it was a little bit more exciting, I suppose, than what you would call a run-of-the-mill goal scorer. Was he greedy, a greedy player? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is good, there's nothing wrong with that. I wouldn't buy a drink either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I wouldn't know, but I, I was never a greedy player, so I don't know, I can't judge. <laughs> Brady.
give Young the chance to come forward, and O'Leary too. Young just, as you see, at the bottom of your picture. And O'Leary, the number five, up as well. Went in for O'Leary. Well, we saw him coming, but the Sheffield United defenders didn't. Front of him, it was provided by Stainrod. Again, a big frame of Willie Young providing a solid barrier for Arsenal. Rice. And Arsenal visibly encouraged by the goal. And a lovely ball from Rice for McDonald. And Sheffield United sliced the part. Young getting up above Cahoon. Calvert catching Arsenal Square. In the middle is Edwards. And Hampson blocked on the line. And what a let off for Arsenal. <laughs> Came off Cahoon and Stapleton has scored the third. Three goals in 14 minutes. And United, whose recent form has very been much built on there ability to go forward. By their own admission, they've been punished for conceding sloppy goals and punished they have been in this cup time. Hansen, Jennings off his line. And the referee has given a penalty for handball against O'Leary. And just 90 seconds after Arsenal's third goal, Chico Hamilton with the opportunity to make it 3-1. And the linesman's flag went up, but the save counts. 75 minutes of the match still remaining, even at 3-1. It's still 3 years for nil. Ricks in for Stapleton. Now Nelson. McDonald! And it's four off the underside of the bar. And domination now turning into a rout. Brady, a lovely turn. Stapleton taking it up. Push out for McDonald almost. Jim Brown just hanging on when it looked as though if he pushed it out, so that the McDonald must score. Woodward by Nelson. That's the retrieving done from David Price, who really has established himself over the last few weeks as a regular for the first time in this Arsenal side. Finding a lot of the graft and battle in the middle of the field. Winning the ball for the likes of Ricks here and Brady to use the possession. Here is Ricks. This is Nelson. Rice for Alan Sunderland. Coming off the Sheffield United player for Stapleton to convert McDonald's cross. And how he enjoyed that. Actually, Stapleton doing as good as McDonald in that game as far as striking goes. Well, you know, <laughs> she's sitting there with. Well, he's counting up the number of headers. That's right, you know, that, that's what we were saying earlier. I mean, same thing, you know, goals is good if you're a, an Arsenal fan, but uh, not all lacking that flair. And, you know, I, I'm you, not what saying the, what the two of you liked the best was was that little Sheffield United guys who brought the penalty. Tried well, he, chip, he tried yeah. to tip the keeper. Yeah, yeah we're sitting here thinking at least, at least he tried something different. You know. You see, that's its good side and its bad side as well. Though I mean, um, you know. Any team would much rather score five ordinary type goals than one brilliant individual effort from a team standpoint. And uh, I understand that. And uh, that's certainly, you know, that's what pays the rent. But I'm talking about uh, players, individual players that add flair to an otherwise ordinary game. And, um, you know, I think that's really desperately lacking today. Yeah, it's funny because when I, when I watch the games like that, I tend to try and put myself in a situation that the player is in. And, uh, 
And it was it was one of the goals there McDonald scored. He came across and he got a virtually a free header. And I was trying to imagine what I would do in that situation. Now I had to try to bring it down in my chest and flick it over the defender and stick it through the keeper's legs. But that's <laughs> that's the way I played. Right. And and he's the same. It's, it's, it's well, he about showmanship. He, he may know? have been the same, but I mean you're a coach now, Ron. Yeah. I mean, what do you want? Do you want this idealistic? I mean, the two of you are like prophets crying in the wilderness. <laughs> yeah. That's what you are really here. You're... Well, I tell you, I, let me tell you exactly what I want. I want to win, first of all. Always did want to win. Uh, that's the first thing for yeah. me. But I want to win with flair. And I want to win with excitement. And we had a boy in Tampa Bay called Roy Wegley, who is now playing for Chelsea. Now, Roy Wegley tries those type of things. He will score brilliant goals for Chelsea. And uh, th as a coach, that's what I want now. As an ex-player, um, I like to look back and see great goals, and uh, you know that's uh, that's what the game is all about, isn't it? Brilliant goals. But also, I mean, obviously, it can be frustrating. I mean, I know when I was playing at United, a number of times that Dennis and Bobby used to scream their heads off at me because at time, yeah, because I got greedy and I wanted to show off a little bit. And it's, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. It didn't. Uh, and you're right. I mean, coaches today sometimes will not stand for that. They won't put up with it. Uh, because, as, as well as I think most coaches, first and foremost, obviously, our, our managers want to win. Uh, but it's, 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 there's, there's winning and winning. There's different yeah, you got, I, well, I, think, I, I, think I don't, I don't know how well. the two sides coexist in your mind, Rodney. Well, how think, you can yeah. decide which comes first. One of them has I to come first. I just told you what comes first. Winning comes first and always well, will. Well, then you're going to tell him not to mess but about. It, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to say to him, is when we're, we're two up, <laughs> go, go and do your business <laughs> yeah, and enjoy yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but then again, you see, when you, when you have a player like George Best, it's like taking your money and paying, you know, you, you, pay, you pay your money and you take your choice. You know, you either go with that or you don't go with that. Now, I personally would go with that, and obviously so would Matt Busby, uh, which makes us good managers. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where we'll end it for this particular session. Rodney, George, thank you. Until next time, goodbye. Wilds. Very good ball for Goodless. Taking on Marsh and playing another lovely cross. Oh, what a goal! Tommy Craig with this free kick. And McDonald! And away comes Hamilton for Everton. Well, they can build an attack and they won't have time to do much else. Well, this is dangerous. Here's Lashman right through now. Forever to the chip. And it's there. Equalizer. And McDonald. And he's got it. How on earth could he ever get his foot to that ball is beyond me. Nicky Bernard. Jones. Craig. 